Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to go over some of the most common forms of poetry, okay? So as I've mentioned, form is basically the shape of a poem, how a poem is just shaped or laid out. Now, when it comes to form, there's lots of really common forms that poems and poets employ. So what I wanted to do was to kind of go through a list of the different types of form that you should be familiar with and you should know what they mean. Therefore, if you read a type of poem following one of these forms that I mentioned, then you can instantly pick it out, okay? So, when it comes to this list, this is a fairly long list, okay? So, I will be kind of updating this list as I go through this lesson. Now, let's begin with the first type of form, which is fairly common. It is what we call a sonnet. Now, remember that a sonnet is a 14-line poem. It must be a 14-line poem, no less or no more, okay? So, it's a 14-line poem, which is written in iambic pentameter, and it's traditionally about love, okay? If you're not clear what iambic pentameter is, I have lots of lessons going over that. However, the easiest way to remember iambic pentameter is when you're reading a line of poetry, uh, each line is it 10 syllables and is the first syllable unstressed, the second syllable stressed, and that happens five times, okay? Again, if you're not clear, just check out my lesson on iambic pentameter, okay? It's actually fairly easy to understand once you wrap your mind around it. So, just to quickly recap, sonnet is 49 poem written in iambic pentameter and it's traditionally about love, but sometimes it's used ironically, such as, for example, how Ozymandias uh, talks about a king that's passed away, but, and it's written in a sonnet form, but actually we realize he uses that ironically because he doesn't actually like the king. Now, the next form to be aware of is a ballad. Now, what a ballad is, is a traditional type of poem which tells a very dramatic story, okay? So, a ballad must always have a dramatic story included within the poem. Now, it was originally, so it's a very old style of poem, okay? And it was originally written as a musical tale, okay? It's a very old style of poem. And we usually find ballads are written in quatrains, in other words, four line stanzas, which are, uh, in terms of the rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B rhyme scheme, or A, B, C, B, okay? So that's a ballad. Now, the next uh, popular type of form is what we call an ode. Now, an ode is actually a very old style of poetry that originated in ancient Greece, okay? So in classic civilization. So an ode, came from ancient Greece and it basically is a poem that praises a person, event or object and it's usually fairly brief, okay? So an ode tends to be a poem that's praising a person but it's actually quite brief. Now, the next poem to be aware of is an elegy. What this poem is, is it's about somebody who has passed away. It is celebrating the memory of a deceased person, someone that's died. That's what we call an elegy. So let's move on to the next type of form, which is free verse. Now, bear in mind that free verse is simply a poem that does not follow any set structure, okay? It's actually very free-flowing. In other words, uh, you know, it can have however num many numbers of stanzas. It can have, you know, one stanza that's fairly long or fairly short. It doesn't, it's not constrained by any type of pattern any type of structure okay that's why it's called free flowing or free verse now remember this is actually a very modern style of poetry okay this form is a very modern construction traditional poems and poems from long ago used to follow a very rigid form okay so free verse tends to be a bit more of a modern style of poetry the next poem to be aware of is the acrostic poem and you've probably heard of it especially in primary school okay now this is a poem where the first letter of each line spells out a name word or phrase for example uh, let's say you've written happy h-a-p-p-y right you write it on one side and then for each letter you then write out a verse of poetry okay so again very very popular with school teachers the next form to be aware of, which is again very, very well known, is what we call the limerick, okay? Now, a limerick is a very humorous type of poem and it has an A-A-B-B-A -B -B -A structure, okay? So a limerick is a poem that's supposed to be quite funny, all right? Now, in terms of this style of poem, that it does follow a specific uh, way of laying out, okay? It has a, a layout. Now, remember, Within a limerick, lines one, two, and five within a stanza must be longer than lines three and four, okay? So lines one, two, and five are much, much longer than lines three and four. And the end of the poem tends to be the funniest aspect of the poem. This is where we have the punchline, okay? Now, moving on to uh, a poem which is from Japan, 
called the heiku. Now, this is a very ancient Japanese form of poetry, okay? So it's written, this ancient form of poetry is written in tercets, which is three line stanzas, okay? So remember that a heiku is a traditional Japanese poem that's written in tercets and lines one and three have five syllables, okay? So within each tercet, within each three line poem, the first and the third line of poetry has, you'd be able to count out five syllables. However, the second line, the middle line, must have seven syllables. Moreover, the other form to be aware of, and this obviously takes us uh, to the end of the list, okay? So these are, this is the list of fairly common forms that you should be aware of, is the Villanelle style of poetry, okay? So the Villanelle style of poetry actually originates from France, all right? So this is an old type of poem from France and it has 19 lines in total. And these lines are split up into different types of stanzas. Now, you have the um, you have five stanzas within a villanelle, which are made up of three lines and they follow the A, B, A structure, okay? So of these 19 lines, this is how it's broken up. It has five stanzas of three lines, which are an A, B, A rhyme scheme. Then you have one stanza made up of four lines, what we would call obviously a quatrain, three lines is tercet, four line is quatrain, and it follows an A, B, A, A rhyme scheme, okay? So that's really it when it comes to understanding the most popular forms of poetry, okay? So of course, again, this list is not exhaustive. You can obviously add more different styles of forms, but these are the most popular you will find that you're studying, okay? One or more of these are gonna find yourself studying, so it's good to know what you should anticipate and what you should expect when you're looking at the form of any type of poem. Thank you so much for listening.